Dear friends in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. A study was done of workers in the United Kingdom. I have little reason to believe that workers in America or employees in Minnesota are any different. This study reveals that aggregately, aggregately over the course of a year, UK workers complain an average of two weeks. And their major complaints in the workplace are IT, the information technology part of our lives, air conditioning, and printers. I can tell you that Bethel Lutheran is not immune to any of those complaints. In fact, it is the scourge of most large buildings that they are either too hot or too cold, or one part is too hot, the other is too cold. I once worked in an office building in Fridley, Minnesota, in which office workers would bring baggies of snow and balance them on top of the thermostats, hoping to induce more heat from the system. All right, we have all kinds of lists about those things we complain. Near the top of that list usually is weather. Now, I know if we all got together and in concert complained in the same way that Matt Benz would change the forecast and we'd get the weather that we want. Yeah. Maybe not. Jobs are a source of complaint. People like to complain about the young people, whoever they are. Here's a news flash for you. When you were 18 or 20 years old, the older generations were complaining about you too. <laughs> and here's my personal favorite, people who complain about people who complain too much. <laughs> you know, it's not like grumbling and complaining is new to our generation. It has afflicted humankind from the beginning of time. We find grumblers in both of our lessons from Jonah and from Matthew for today. We could spend the entire hour without all the great music and the prayers and talk about Jonah today. In fact, I've often in the past used 60 or 90 minutes on a lecture specifically about the irony and the humor and the grumbling of Jonah, much of which we have in the lection that we have read for this day. You will recall that Jonah disobeyed God's call to go to Nineveh, but through a great storm and a great fish, he ends up there anyway, called to preach to the people. But Jonah is not happy. The grumbler provides the barest and worst sermon in the Bible. He walks only one-third of the way through Nineveh, and all he says is, 40 days and Nineveh will be overthrown. 40 days and Nineveh will be overthrown. That's it. Hopeless sermon. But even those hopeless words affect change in the people of Nineveh. They repent, they turn from their ways, and God decides against the calamity that he had wanted to offer to those wicked people of Nineveh. Rejoice, everybody rejoice. Not grumpy Jonah. He's unhappy. Unhappy enough that he grumbles to God that he'd just soon die. I mean, he says... God, I knew you'd do this all along because you're a gracious God. It didn't make any difference what I said to this people. You were going to do whatever you want. I'm the laughing stock of the people. I, I just want to die. And then he marches each east of town and like a three-year-old just sits down grumpily and waits to see what God is going to do to Nineveh. And it is So God causes a bush to grow, providing shade for Jonah. But just as quickly as the bush grows, it withers, and Jonah becomes even more grumpy now that he no longer has the shade of the bush. And God challenges Jonah. Jonah, you, you, you're concerned about a bush? Should I not be concerned about a great city, 
of 120,000 people? We will come back to that. There are grumblers in our lesson from Matthew for this day as well. We don't need to rehearse the entire parable, but just to remind you that workers are hired at five different times to go into the vineyard. 6 a.m., 9 a.m., noon, 3 p.m., and 5 p.m. When 6 o'clock, the end of the workday comes, they line up for their pay, the last being first. And when those last, having worked just one hour, get to the cashier, they get an entire day's pay. Strangely, we hear nothing about those who are hired in the middle of the day, but we hear plenty from those who were hired the first of the day and have worked 12 hours. They get also the usual day's pay, and when they get it, they grumble against the landowner. This is not fair. We who worked all day have borne the burden of the the scorching heat even as Jonah endured the scorching heat while watching Nineveh. We expect to fare better than those people who work just one hour. The landowner has a twofold answer for those people hired earliest in the day. First, he says, you're getting exactly what we agreed to. I am holding up my part Of the bargain. Secondly, are are you envious because I am generous? Friends, we have a generous God. No matter how much you have or you don't have, no matter your state of health, no matter your circumstances in life, You enjoy a generous God. We hear that over and over. Have you been listening to the television interviews or reading them in newspapers following these many natural disasters in the Caribbean and Mexico and the southern states? So often the people having lost everything proclaim that it is faith that gets us through. Please see this video of two survivors of Hurricane Harvey. I would think so. They do have lights on the front of the helicopters, but it becomes, you know, incrementally more difficult the darker it gets. And then again, these the the rain has started again. That complicates factors. Visibility would become even more difficult for the pilot, regardless of whether they're looking for somebody or not. Tell me, tell me about your day. Man, we went, came home yesterday. It wasn't raining. 45 minutes later, we in the flood. And we stay on the first floor of the apartments, and water just started coming in, so we went to the second floor. And so how did they get you in that basket? We climbed out the windows with the sliding doors, and they just strapped us in. Yeah, what's your name? Jeremiah. Jeremiah, what's your, how old's your son? He's six, Jeremiah Jr. Yeah. We thank God. We thank God. And this is all you have. Yeah, this is all we got. Jeremiah is thankful. In spite of having lost everything in the hurricane, he is thankful to God. In a longer version of this same interview, but of such quality it would have been harder to play in this place, at the end of the interview, Jeremiah says twice, God is. God is. That is perfect theology. God tells Moses to tell the people that his name is, I am who I am. God is. So who has the right to grumble? The person who has lost everything in a hurricane-induced flood? The family who says goodbye to a 22-day-old baby? That family was in this very room yesterday. And through these days, I have heard many proclamations of faith and hope from them. Who has the right to grumble? People with physical impairments? 
Studies show that people with physical impairments attend worship more often than able-bodied people. Who has the right to grumble? People who put in a long day in the hot sun and then get exactly what they deserve. Or one who preaches a lousy sermon and then still sees that sermon bring people to repentance. In the latter two cases, it is a generous God or a generous landowner who give people far more than they deserve. From Jonah, we know that the people of Nineveh were very wicked. They didn't deserve another chance. And yet God, in God's grace and love, gives them that chance. In the case of the vineyard, the landowner tells everybody that He will pay whatever is right. He decides at the end what is right is a full day's pay, no matter how many hours one has worked. Now, if one has worked the whole day, one might feel cheated, but they are getting exactly what they deserve. We have a generous God. God makes many promises to us in the Bible. One of the promises that comes through with crystal clarity over and over again is the promise of eternal life. If you are 110 years old and you have faithfully served God for that century and decade, you will get exactly what God has promised. If you are a 22-day-old baby and baptized in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, you will get exactly what God has promised. If you have lost everything that you have in a hurricane, you will get what God has promised. And you know, even if you're grumpy and you complain about other people, you still get the full day's pay, exactly what God has promised. None of us, not even the most long-serving among us, deserve what God gives to us. But in God's great grace, God gives it to us anyway. Amen. Our hymn of the day today is a call and response. It should be quite clear from both the hymnal and from the screens, that which you sing, I will be the cantor. Let's have fun as we listen to God.